if you're doing this hiring for say yeah. a senior person, well, okay. Like what if you don't have that domain knowledge or something, right? I mean, how do you kind of get around that with cross discipline? What's your approach? So I think this is key and this is good at every level, whether you're senior or junior is <laughs> here. I put, how would they save your ass? How are you going to actually work with them on something hard? Like the right way to think of somebody in an interview is like, Oh God, our game's a mess. Oh God, our project's a mess. I have to work with this person. It's like, go do blah. What would you want them to do? How would you want to work together? You're like, you know what? Our users hate our first time user experience. You know, people like the game, but they hate the fatigue. How are we going to fix that? And talking with that person through that process. So cross discipline, if I'm a designer talking to an engineer, I'm like, hey, we have to build this feature. I've written spec that's not quite clear. How would you think about it? Or hey, art director, you know, we don't like the style. Um, we want to try four new styles. Walk me through how you're going to generate four very different styles. My own personal experience with art directors is the measure of a good one is not only are they good at art, but they can give you choices. Mm. They can give they can give you like three things that actually look different. Lots and lots of art directors have one really great style that they're awesome at, but it's very hard to get them to move beyond that. What I personally am a huge bias towards is I don't care if they draw much themselves, but they can give you three different looks mm. fairly quickly and say, we could go this way, that's different. This way, that's different. That way, that's different. And can they communicate to me about something when I ask them a question that I think is reasonable, but I've misunderstood? Can they then explain to me what the real issue is? Mm -hmm. Because the reality is, especially in games, and uh, games and startups are similar in this, but in these sort of shared discipline efforts, their ability to explain something you don't understand is critical. And that's a very good interview question. You're mm -hmm. like, you know, I yeah. don't, never really understood why poly count matters so much. You, art director, explain to me. Or, hey, why do you use ZBrush? Or I'm using art director is an easy one from my standpoint. For engineering, it's a little trickier because people aren't engineers, aren't as comfortable. I tend to myself test basic logic with engineers to see if I think about mm -hmm. it. And having done a lot of product management, I ask engineers product management questions because my a core hiring belief of mine is if you can't think logically, you're going to be in trouble in live service games, which I've mostly worked on. Because live service games are much... Uh, almost algorithmic, right? They are yeah. television versus movie is how I tend to divide game stuff. I've mostly worked in TV where the ability to be adapt and to put out volume is important. Um, yeah. And so, and the uh, logic is, most people, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Right. And the ability to work from first principles is powerful. Yeah. Like they're like, oh, I understand why we're doing this. Yes, I liked it better this way, but I understand that our process, that enough users have said they prefer it this way. Or I still don't like where we're at. Can we do these two other kinds of tests? Because I think there's a better solution. But understanding how to think within the, the business constraints. And I'm not afraid at all about telling people. I won't tell them super secret stuff. But I give people the real business constraints. Mm. I'm saying, look, our company, it's. Anybody who's ever worked for Activision, you better grow 10% year over year, right? If you do, Activision lets you do what you want. If you don't, they send somebody in, and then if that doesn't fix it, they start firing people, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, that's who Activision is. And, I mean, look at Blizzard. Once the guy left, then they started messing with uh, Blizzard, and then all that stuff came out mysteriously, <laughs> um, right? Yeah, exactly. But so I'm sort of going broad there, but my point being that in the cross-discipline stuff is how would you – the interviewer interact with this discipline or vice versa, or are you the interviewee? And then how imagine that scenario and explore that scenario. I guess maybe zoom into that a little bit, Bill, if you don't mind, like, especially with, cause my backgrounds and, and, you know, software engineering being mm -hmm. across the table and not being a software engineer, you know, as a hiring manager, as a recruiter, as right. like a studio head or something like how, what, what are those logical tips that you kind of use to determine whether or not somebody, cause like, like you said, Logic's really important, especially with technical talent. That's their entire job is logic. So yeah. it's like, how do you yeah. test for that? What's the litmus? So a couple things that I test for with engineers. Let's say I'm an engineer. So one of the things I will do is ask them a bunch of game design questions. Because I tend to believe game design is systems design not versus narrative design and stuff like that. And I want to see that somebody's a gamer. And I want to see that they think well over games. Because even if we're not engineers, a, a classic question that I ask is I'm like, design, I'll use an existing game. Make a character for Overwatch 2 and tell me how you're going to do it, right? And I tend to ask that of almost everybody. And a good answer is stuff like, well, I look at the characters that are there. I look for something that thematically could fit. I'm looking for a gameplay mechanic that might represent somebody with a lot of really fast, who's, a good, who's good at kiting. Maybe I, I don't have a character like that. I say, well, I'm a kiting character and my theme is, uh, I don't know, uh, Mayan mythology austin what we we're talking about earlier <laughs> yeah, right yeah so yeah. i have a mayan shooter i'm going to put a dude who needs to be a kiter i'm going to do it like this i'm going to think about how to market it 
uh, what kind of weapons, uh, what kind of things would I consider in balancing the weapon, rate of fire, uh, power of hit, uh, availability of ammo, upgradability, whatever. But my point in doing that is I'm going through it in a very logical manner. And so games are an easy way to connect at a game company with an engineer. Do they think cleanly and logically about something? Mm. And if somebody's like, well, what I really care about is I wish there was a hero just like this D&D character. You're like, okay, I know the kind of engineer I'm getting, mm. right? Or mm -hmm. if an engineer is like, well, you know, in the lead table, blah, 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 blah. I'm getting insight into how that engineer thinks. So that's part one. Mm -hmm. And then part two with engineers that I think is useful is to ask process, say, how do you want to make a feature together? Right, because that's usually how people interact. Describe for me the perfect feature in a game. And I often use an existing game that we both played and say, let's say, how would you like us to make, to rework the matchmaking system in Fortnite? Right, I don't think Fortnite actually has a match. I think it's just the next 60 people and maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but using some concrete example like that, because what I'm looking for is with an engineer, I'm like, I hope the person's smarter and more logical than me, right? And then I also will, especially for back-end engineers, because they're so hard to measure, I actually have several classic logic puzzles I give them, which it's not to be annoying, but they're specifically, I've found questions that other back, that I've gotten back-end engineers to validate as fair. Yeah. And then I want to see how they do with it. Um, and I don't care, like, there's something that comes up, people are like, well, what if they found the interview question online? I'm like, good. That means they go and they actually prepare and think properly. That's a plus if they can go find that someone out there has managed to make a copy of my answer. Good for them. If, they, if they've done the work to track it down, it says to me they'll be able to Google what they need. And we all know that with engineers, half of it is Google. <laughs> it is new stack overflow all day long. Exactly. Much, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you guys get my point. So what you're doing is you're thinking about how am I actually going to interact with this person on something hard? And then you ask questions that are uh, designed to give you insight as to what that experience would be like. Yeah, I think you mentioned um, something about like, um, you know, tic-tac-toe or something in a previous discussion. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have an, if that we, if at some point people are curious, I could give my, it's a PM interview, but I use chunks of it for almost every discipline because PMs are the newest and hardest to hire discipline based on how many friends ask me to help them hire PMs and just my experience because it's a relatively newer discipline and finding one who likes games and is good is hard. Um, any PMs out there, I'm sure you'll fight me on that as well, but I'll look at that. <laughs>